D.C. Well, it may be one of the most interesting little cities that, that in North America you haven't heard of. Um, it's a suburb of Paris. You can walk there across a bridge or, or uh, in some places not, not even across a bridge. It's built a, a reputation um, as, a, as really the high-tech center of northern France. Um, and it, you'll find all the things that you would expect to find in, in a high-tech center. You'll find incubators, and you'll find startup companies, and you'll find a very activist government, uh, they, you know, powerful, uh, powerful broadband, and all, uh, all the kinds of institutions you would expect. What's most interesting about EC as an intelligent community, what is distinctive about them, which you observe when you go there, is two things. In EC, they focus on getting ICT, Information and Communications Technology, into the culture of the city in countless ways from, um, oh, I know, I've got my microphone off, um, from cyber kindergartens in which uh, there are webcams there so that parents can see what their kids are up to and maybe even engage with them during the school day, and cyber tea rooms for uh, elderly citizens to learn digital technologies. Uh, two very minor examples, uh, a, a really interesting set of online applications, including parking, you know, arranging, paying for parking over your mobile phone and walking around with a mobile camera and taking pictures of little icons and getting information about what's going on in the city. So it's part of the daily life of the citizens. But the other interesting part about it, to me, is the focus on culture as a means to attract citizens into ICT. Culture, the French, of course, are very proud of their rich culture. Um, and they use it in many different ways. One of the best examples is a place called Le Cube, uh, which is it's a media arts sort of hangout. It's a, it's a beautiful building, but it's a place in which its citizens can go and learn um, uh, digital media and get expert guidance on projects and child, there's pro things for children and there's uh, artists come and do interesting projects. And again, it's all about using culture as a means to excite people about ICT. So, we're going to talk a little bit in the next few minutes about how and why they do it that way. But before that, I'd like to show you something of the community. It is my pleasure to sit up here with my good friend, Eric Legal, who has an interesting title. He's the director of EC Media. Uh, Eric, could, uh, first of all, thank you for speaking the English you're about to speak with us. And, uh, <laughs> thank you for your uh, patience <laughs> or your indulgence. <laughs> uh, what does EC Media do? Oh, EC Media, it's a public-private company. Um, it's very rare in France because it's not usual in this kind of activities. Our, our job is to to be the innovative uh, thinking part of the city and, and the communication. So we can 
create a lot of uh, newspaper uh, in the traditional way until the app, st app uh, application for iPhone or iPad. And uh, uh, my, my job specifically is to uh, think about some uh, pilots, uh, ideas, testing uh, new products and, um, and try with the population um, and, and try to be a, a living laboratory of information technology or digital society, I don't know the name, but the life of today. That's a really cool job. Um, Okay, every intelligent community does have a story. It's a story of, of renewal. Um, I wonder if you would tell us about EC's uh, crisis, which actually goes back now quite a number of years. You're a very mature um, community in that, in that regard. And how did the community respond to it? Um, it was a long time ago now. Yes. Huh? It was uh, 30 years ago um, with the economic crisis. Uh, we lost uh, jobs, inhabitants, Work news, and uh, the citizens elect a new mayor, Mr. Santini, and he decided immediately to um, to try to change, uh, because at that time the city was not attractive at all for the Parisian people, of course, but also for the inhabitants around us. Because, um, for example, in the other side of the river, we have uh, the second largest city in the Paris area, it's called Boulogne, Billancourt, and the children of this city they didn't have the right to play with our children in EC because we are too poor and it was not the same um, classification of population. So, uh, you, Mrs. You in, the, in, the United, in the United States we call that, you were from the other side of the tracks, the railroad tracks, yeah. but okay. But today, we have, there are also, uh, too much uh, inhabitants than NEC in the city of boulogne billancourt but the, we have the same budget because we have more companies than them. And um, of course, now their children are playing with their children. <laughs> and, but the most important is our inhabitants are really proud now what yes. we became, uh, thanks to this. Uh, it's just a vision of the mayor. It's just to decide we have to change. If we do nothing, this city will die. We have to move, we have to try something. We did, he did not know. Of course, at that time, that internet will be what it is. But he, he, he bet that the services company, a media company, and IT after that uh, could be the future of the city. In our last session, we were asking, how do you create change without getting voted out of office? And I've, I've had the pleasure now of meeting Mayor Santini uh, several times. And I asked him that question. And he gave me an answer, but you know, it's difficult to get an answer to a complex question like that. And then I learned, saw the answer, which is we were waiting outside a restaurant to be picked up, and citizen walked by, and all of a sudden he just stopped talking to me and went over and grabbed the citizen and talked to him and had a whole conversation. I thought, that's how you create change without getting voted out of office. I understand he'll still go to your birthday party if you invite him in EC. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So that's an important lesson. <laughs> um, what has the community done to ensure that citizens, that businesses, that your government has the broadband infrastructure it needs? What we've done? Yes. <laughs> we work. <laughs> you work, you work hard, yes. We discuss a lot. For, for example, for the um, uh, infrastructure on telecommunication. You know, in France, um, we, um, we had for a long time a national company, France Telecom, and the market was liberalized uh, 10 years ago, 12, 12 years ago. But two years before the end of this monopolies, we met the American operators of telecom, and we said to them, you will arrive in France. You will arrive in our city, because we have a lot of companies. But we suggest to you to start by your city. Because if you start by your city, we will be able to communicate very strongly to our companies, just to say the market now is open, so it's a chance for you and we will attract more companies. So they accepted. At the time it was um, MF, MFS communication, mm -hmm. and uh, he said, okay. And uh, he did the, the work on the street before the end of the monopolies. So the D-Day, when the monopolies was full, the market in Isle Muino was open, and we were alone. So a lot of companies during the two years after that, 
came in EC just because the telecommunication market was open and, and of course, uh, less expensive than uh, everywhere else. Yeah. It was quite so two years early, somehow you managed to convince some carriers to invest a lot of money in putting, in putting uh, broadband into the community because in 1996, it was April, I think, wasn't it? April of 1996 that the, the turnover happened. That's very interesting. Um, all right, so that's the, the, the broadband infrastructure, and it's there, and it's solid, and everyone's using it. Um, could you give us some example, examples of steps your community is taking with people? Uh, how do you, are you growing your workforce? How are you training them? How are you keeping them in EC when they become adults? Keeping the workforce? Yeah. Uh, we try, but... The, East Illinois is on the hearts of the Parisian area, so of course the inhabitants uh, are working in Paris or in, in other cities outside. But we have more than um, employees who are coming every morning uh, in the city than inhabitants were. Right. They have more living. jobs than yeah. people in EC. We have more jobs than inhabitants. So uh, it, it, it's the first thing. And, and the first result, it's we became a right city. Mm -hmm. And because we are a rich city, we have low taxes uh, for inhabitants. And the inhabitants today pay less taxes than uh, 15 years ago. And it's not a uh, general uh, situation in France. So no. uh, you are really there, really lucky. Yeah. Interesting. One of the things that we, when we, I was in EC, we had an interesting conversation just accidentally. Uh, you were talking about the fact that, that EC is what we'd say in English landlocked. You are, you're surrounded on all sides by other cities. There's a river. And you're constantly building and rebuilding. But there really isn't any new space to develop. There's no place to put you know, completely new buildings. And so as you're attracting companies, you're finding that sometimes you attract them and they actually will um, move into a neighboring city, but that that's fine with you. Mm -hmm. And could you talk about why that, why that works, why that model is okay, that you put the effort into attracting them, but they end up in Bologna next to you, for instance? Uh, and now, it's um, an evolution in France. It's to try to combine the effort of cities be, uh, between them to be uh, stronger. So, uh, in Italy, we know we, we, have, we are a small city. Huh? We have 60,000 inhabitants, and, uh, and uh, we don't have enough space, space to attract all the companies or inhabitants who would like to come. The prices of the real estate are growing also a lot. So for us, it's very important to have a good relation with the other city because when a company came and asked to, the, to us if uh, we could welcome them, we answer not because we don't have space, but you could go to boulogne biancourt or mm -hmm. Meudon or the other city around us because now um, we share the, um, the taxes revenue ah. for companies. Ah, very enlightened. I saw many examples of, of innovation in EC, both in, in the public sector services, and uh, <laughs> I remember Eric was, was kept showing me his mobile parking application, and it's a great application, and he kept being upset that I wasn't you know, really excited about it. I had to break the bad news to him that I've, I've seen them before. But that's a great example. It works. It's robust. It's so robust. I remember once you forgot to pay your parking. You're going, <laughs> no, I. Um, so public sector innovation, private sector innovation. Could you give us some examples? What you think are the important examples from EC? The, as you said, it's difficult to to to, yes. to, to say uh, it's an innovative situation because you that's, you that's didn't me. have uh, at all. And when I I've seen the video, I suppose. Uh, the electronic machine to vote for an American eh? people, it's no, totally no. normal. No, no, it's not. No, we don't do that. You know, see, I don't blow, that <laughs> but blows in France, us away. In France, it's very innovative. We have very few cities uh, yeah. able to vote to this kind of system. But it's just to, to show, we, we have, I, I think, 40 or 50 different electronic services mm -hmm. created, developed since the last two years. But the most important is not one, it's our global vision because uh, you said that from the Kingdom Garden to the elderly people who try to have um, different services. So I, I'm not able to say mm -hmm. this one is the most innovative. Of course, we have seen yesterday EC3D, key. it is an innovative application it for is. us. But um, we have a lot of different things like that in different topics, different domains. 
Why did you see decide to make its, its waste facility uh, and re recycling and waste disposal facility, which is located on the banks of the Seine, why did they decide to make it look like a museum from the outside? It's such a beautiful building. What was, why, why, how was that decision made? No, it's not like a museum. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's close. Because, because architecture, yeah. it is the design of, of a city. Yeah. Uh, we are just close to Paris, and Paris ah. is, the, is the most beautiful living museum of the world. But if you want to see what is a living city mm -hmm. of today, uh, you have to, to go outside of Paris, because uh, we build a lot of different buildings, mm -hmm. different things. And Maya Santini, for him, it's very important to have a, a special vision on architecture. You speak about this plant, but uh, uh, we had also a new building for um, headquarters uh, who was uh, awarded by uh, a specialist of architecture. And we try to be the most innovative as possible in this uh, field also. Mm -hmm. When I visited your community, I saw several examples of information communications technology being used to improve health care. You took me to the Lasada Les Rest Home um, and some other facilities also to create new kinds of healthcare businesses, including a, a, a scale that I, have, I stand on now every morning. Um, what do you think are the best examples that you have for me see about, about ICT and healthcare? We are not the best in this topic because in France it's not a um, local mm -hmm. competence. Right. So of course we have hospital and uh, companies who, who try to, to test or pilot something. But what I'm sure is we are working hard to help people to stay at home as longer as possible. With the technology, it's why we are creating a new uh, area, a residential area called the Fort, Digital Fort yeah. in EC, um, with a lot of uh, technology and uh, environmental uh, topics, just to, to say to people, you can live as long as possible in this uh, apartment. And for those who are not able to stay at home, we modernize the rest uh, room home, rest mm -hmm. room building. And last year, for example, we opened a new one uh, with a very technical uh, uh, environment. You, you have seen, uh, you, you try to create animation between the young and the elderly people uh, around this uh, technology and the uh, around internet, or TV, or things like that. And we're working with um, a local startup uh, called uh, Wizings, uh, who has created a special uh, device for blood pressures. And we will distribute it uh, for people uh, who, who need it. This is remarkable. This is just this is one of these little technology things I personally love. The, this company, With Things, With Things, Why, Phi, Why Things, uh, has a, a a bathroom scale for your weight and also a blood pressure cuff. Okay, nothing, no, so far so good. They're electronic, big deal. What's interesting about it is that they, if you have a Wi-Fi hub in your home, they'll talk to the Wi-Fi hub and talk to the servers of Y things and then transmit it back to your iPad or your iPhone so that what you get is a chart. So every day you stand on your scale and you see what you weighed. You remember what you weighed yesterday? I don't. This thing keeps track of it. And in the old, the old saying is that what you, what you measure, you can manage. Well, now I can actually see my weight going up and down, and I go, oh, geez, I guess I shouldn't have done that yesterday or the day before. It's really impressive. So um, the Lacerda Rest Home, I, the technology, there's a good technology platform there, but the single most impressive thing was um, the young people and working with elderly people doing basically you know, stories of their lives and bringing those stories of these, of these somewhat frail elderly people out into the community. Um, through that video. That was really, really impressive. But what is important is not technology. Exactly. It's, it's what technology can do to, exactly. for people, for human. And that, for me, was really the takeaway from, from EC. I think, again, you've, you, you've said 30 years ago you were at your crisis. You've, you have been working this continuously. I don't think it's ever going to stop. Um, but you're now at a point where it's all about the people of EC and the degree to which you can continue to have it be a place for the most innovative companies uh, in France to come, but that the citizens become engaged in the life of that technology life in a way that it's very rare to see. So I certainly found my, my visit there very impressive. And are there questions that you'd like to throw into this discussion before I, I, I wrap us up? 
It's very hard to get an impression of such a subtle, such a subtle place as this until you see it with your own eyes. Okay. Well, th Eric, thank you very much for spending a very useful half thank hour you with us. Thank you.